Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACE's GAMSAT Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 21, Question 68 to 70. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at buoyancy force, Archimedes principle, and how to manipulate the uh, different formulae such as density and um, analyze what would happen if we put a block of ice inside a cylinder uh, containing water or in this instance, it's a liquid. So before we dive into the unit, I think it's important we understand some foundational concepts here because this is where the training rules fall off for a lot of students. So just take note that um, the buoyancy force is an upward force exerted by a fluid that opposes the weight of an immersed object. So if we can draw what we see in the system here, so we've got our... So that's the level of liquid. We've got our ice block here. We can see that it's static. It's not, it's not moving. So we can assume it's just not moving, which means that in, in situations or scenarios where the system is static, the buoyancy force is going to equal the object's weight. So that means if we draw center here, if the buoyancy force is going to be going, well, if the force of gravity is going to be pushing it down, so the force of gravity of the ice is going to be pushing it down into the water. The buoyancy force is going to oppose this force, and it's equal. So it's going to be, I mean, assume the areas are the same size because they're equal. It's going to be force buoyancy equal. Now, it's important to know also Archimedes' principle, buoyant force is equal to the weight of displaced fluid. So we know that since buoyancy force and force of gravity of the um, ice block acting on the water are equal, therefore, this, if we can draw, say, another arrow, of the fluid, of the weight, sorry, the weight of the fluid that's been displaced, it's going to be equal as well. So this is something that's uh, important to note when we're answering this question, because in the stimulus, we're given the mass of an ice block, which is 100 grams, but we can convert it to uh, kilograms because our densities of the different solutions are given in kilograms per meter cubed. And we've been given the density of the three solutions, whether it be the brine, the water, or the ice block. But just recall here, because we have to use some mathematics here, when we're using density in the equation, so for example, in question 68, don't get confused. We're not calculating the density of the ice block. We're calculating the density of the fluid that's been displaced because we put an ice block inside the fluid. And you can see in figure one and figure two in the stimulus that if you put an ice block into the brine solution, it's going to increase the volume or well, it's going to increase uh, the level of the solution in the cylinder. So we have to therefore find out what the density is of the fluid that's been displaced, not the ice block. That's one trick that the, the ASA did here to, I guess, uh, play around with the students. So we know that the density equals mass divided by volume. And what is the mass and what is the volume? Well, we know that the volume we're looking for is going to be the volume of the fluid that's been displaced. So that's what we're going to be looking for in question 68. But what mass do we use? Well, you're probably incorrect in saying we're going to use the mass of the block of the ice. But why are we using the mass of the block of the ice? Well, the answer is because, remember, we showed here that the buoyancy force is equal to the force of gravity of the ice block acting on the water, which is equal to the force of the weight of the fluid that's been displaced, which means the, well, the weight or the mass of the block of the ice is going to equal the weight or the mass of the fluid that's been displaced. So that's why we can use the uh, mass of the ice block to answer question 68. So also keep in mind, um, we can rearrange the equation to uh, for 68 as such to answer the question. And also one meter cubed for conversions is the same as 100 centimeter cubed per meter cubed. And one centimeter cubed equals one mil. So keep those in mind now, once we go through uh, 68 and 69, uh, uh, yep, so those two questions, but I think it's more relevant now for 68. But 
keep that in mind. So let's just um, get our whiteboard out. There's a ghost mode here. And I'll get the uh, whiteboard out. So let's begin. So we're going to calculate the volume uh, the brine solution is occupying in the cylinder. We're going to use the previously derived equation. So remember, we're going to use, uh, sorry, we're going to use V equals M density, which remember the mass of the ice block is 0 0.1 kilograms and the density of the brine solution, remember? So the density of the brine solution is 1,100 kilograms per meter cubed. So let's just convert this to an easy to work with number. I mean, I times this by 10, times this by 10. So we'd end up with one kilogram per 11,000 kilogram per meter cube. So now we can remove the uh, same units and we're going to be left with, if this will come up, so we're what we're going to be left with is one meter cubed over 11,000. So let's convert this to scientific notation. Um, it's just easier to work with. Uh, so if we convert it to scientific notation, what we're going to end up with is 1 by 10 to the 0 meters cubed over 1.1 by 10 to the 4. So it's just easy to work like this because if we convert the scientific notation, we can easily subtract now. Because remember, if you're dividing scientific notations, you subtract the values. So what we're going to end up with here is if we're dividing one by, so let's say one divided by one is one, one divided by uh, nine is going to be 1.1. So then one divided, oh, sorry, one divided by 0 0.9 is 1.1. 1 divided by 1.1 therefore has to be 0 0.9. So you know it's going to be 0, 0 0.9. So what are we going to times it by? So 0 minus 4. So it's going to be that minus 4 meters cubed. So that's our answer. But we have to represent it in mils. So we need to convert meter cubed into a number we can work with. So remember, recall that one, one mil is equal to one centimeter cubed. So we can convert this to centimeter cubed. And remember, a centimeter cubed, a hundred centimeter cubed is this, uh, so one meter cubed equals a hundred centimeters cubed per meter cubed. So what we can rewrite this as, so I'll rewrite it as, so let's just, let's just do the calculation here. So one meter cubed, remember, equals 100 cubed centimeters per meter cubed, which is the same as saying one million. So it's six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six centimeters cubed per cubic meter. Which is the same, I mean, just write in scientific notation, 1 by 10 to the 6 centimeters cubed per meter cubed. So that's how we can rewrite, uh, uh, I guess, this equation or this number here. So therefore, if all we have to do now, because we've got a meter cubed here and divided by meter cubed here, to get our centimeter cubed, so we can get our mil, is we just have to times this value by this value. So if we times 0 0.9 by 10 to the minus 4 meter cubed times it by 1 million centimeter cubed per meter cubed, so 1 by 10 to the 6 centimeter cubed meter cubed, what happens is this is going to cancel out and we're going to be left with these two numbers up here. So remember what we do with, uh, so dividing we subtract, times into um, scientific notations, we're going to add. So minus 4 plus 6 is 2. 
So 0 0.9 times 1 is just going to be 0 0.9 times 10 to the power of 2 centimeters cubed. And we know that a centimeter cube is the same as a mil, so it's going to equal 0 0.9 by 10 to the 2 mils. And remember what we calculated at the beginning, we're calculating the volume of the fluid that's been displaced. So the volume of the fluid that's been displaced is going to equal this value, and then we can just obviously bring it across. So it's going to be, uh, if we go uh, 0 0.9 by 10 to the 2 is the same as 90 mils. So we're going to get 90 mils of the brine solution has been displaced. So that's how we answer question. So if we go back now, I can just um, clear the screen. So that's how we're going to answer question 68. So the answer for question 68, therefore, because remember we start off with 400 mils of the brine solution and we've displaced 90. So the mark is going to be 490 mils. So that answer, therefore, is going to be B. So if we move over to question 69 now, let's go into the ghost mode here. Um, I'll probably just remove, clear the screen. So if we go to 69 now, 69 is actually uh, pretty straightforward if you think about it. Conceptualize it this way. You had brine solution and the ice block melted. I would just think of it this way. If you had an ice block that is melted, you're just going to add the volume. So if it's 400 mils of brine solution, your ice block is 100 mils. It melts. It's going to be 500 mils. So the answer for 69 has to be, therefore, C. Or you can think of it this way. I mean, um, we know that the density of water is the same as one, so that's right. So density of water is one gram per mil. We have a hundred grams of the ice, and we know therefore that a um, hundred grams is therefore going to be a hundred mils. So a hundred mils plus the four hundred brine solution is equal to five hundred. Or so you know again, it's going to equal to C. Or we could do another way, like how we the previous answer, where we just did. Remember density, uh, so we just use volume of the fluid. So in this instance, the volume of the fluid is water. It's not the fluid displaced. So the volume of the fluid here we're looking at is water equals the uh, mass of the ice block, say 0.1 kilograms over the density of the ice block. So remember the density of um, uh, the density, sorry, of water. So the density of water is going to be 1,000. So we go 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And you do the exact same thing as we did beforehand. So there's quite a few ways uh, to answer this question. But uh, just keep in mind that in this instance, we're looking at the volume of the uh, water. So the water, because now it's a liquid, so it's liquid water. So the volume of water, it's not the volume of the displaced liquid. It's the volume of water. So it's volume of water over the, um, I guess, the mass of the ice block originally and the density, which is going to be the density of water. So um, that's how we do question 69. Now, question 60, sorry, question 70 is actually pretty straightforward. So... Um, Suppose the water has the same volume and temperature. Um, it, so we're going to use water this time instead of brine solution. So by the time all the ice is melted, the water would have risen by, uh, it, it's, it's the exact same principle. So think about it. If you just put an ice block in water, it melts. It's going to be, again, the same thing, 100 mils. So the answer is going to be 100 mils, so C. So um, the properties of the ice block haven't changed. So once it's melted, 100 mils of water will mix with 400 mils of the solution, and you're just going to get 500 mils. So the answer for 70 is C. So um, th this topic is a bit of a difficult one because a lot of foundational mathematics and understanding of, say, Archimedes' law and um, physics, uh, buoyancy force, um, it, is, it is difficult, but once you conceptualize what's happening, it will become a lot easier. So if you do have any questions about this unit, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.